The publication of the CP5H loss, which was published in 2012, was a crucial moment for the rail industry, and it generally seemed like an optimistic time for the industry. But by the time it came to delivering the program of upgrades and renewals, that optimism quickly turned to frustration. Before we go on, it's probably important to understand what CP5H loss even means. The CP part just stands for control period, and the number 5 is just the control period which it covers. So CP5 covered the period from 2014 to 2019, and this was the window within which Network Rail was to undertake the enhancements. The HLOS or HLOS stands for High Level Output Specification, and this sets out what the government expects will be delivered within that window. The CP5H loss was important because the government and Network Rail set out a truly ambitious programme of renewals, upgrades and electrification. This electrification programme was supposed to have created a so-called electric spine that would have provided a strategic electric freight corridor from Southampton to the Midlands and to the North. And crucially, the Great Western Main Line was supposed to be electrified to Bristol, Cardiff and to Swansea. So, why am I talking about this now, given that the period ended six years ago? Well, it's mostly due to the decision by the government to pause further electrification of the Midland Main Line. But also on a personal note, I've been reflecting on a map which I created around the time of the publication of the H loss, which set out rather optimistically all of the projects that were either supposed to have started or been completed within CP5. I have also recently started to rework the map to show the projects that were delivered, delivered late, deferred or cancelled altogether. But mostly it's due to the pause of Midland Mainline electrification, which many see is part of a wider problem that the industry faces, which I'll talk about in more detail shortly. You may also be forgiven for asking what was so bad about CP5, given that some key elements were delivered, albeit late. During delivery, it quickly became clear that much of what was promised was simply not achievable. The main reason for this was that the government and network rail were far too ambitious and were overly optimistic about what the industry could deliver. Although large stretches of the Great Western Main Line were electrified, many schemes were either deferred or cancelled altogether as the CP5 debacle began to unfold and ultimately the Great Western Mainline Electrification Programme was heavily curtailed, with the most noticeable cancellation being the section from Cardiff to Swansea, and it now seems unlikely that the section via Bath to Bristol Temple Meads will be electrified. The electrification of the Valley Lines in South East Wales was also cancelled. Thankfully, some Valley's routes have since been electrified as the scheme was repackaged and delivered by an alliance led by Transport for Wales. But the map published alongside the HLOS by the government did show that the line to Webber Vale was to be electrified, but as it stands there are no plans to electrify this route. The electric spine was also another victim of the cuts. Although many in the industry, even at the time, saw this as overly ambitious, it was a key part of the CP5H loss, but ultimately the conversion from third rail to 25 kV overhead of the section between Southampton, Basingstoke and Reading was cancelled. The upgrade of what is now East West Rail from Oxford to Bedford was supposed to have been largely delivered or work started within CP5, and the line was supposed to be electrified but the reopening between Bicester and Bletchley and the upgrade of the section between Bletchley and Bedford was deferred into CP6 and CP7, and plans to electrify the route to form part of the spine were also cancelled altogether, as was electrification from Didcot to Oxford. Electrification of what is now referred to as East West Rail is once again being discussed but it's likely that it won't be delivered until 2035 at the earliest. Other noticeable cancellations include 
the line from Oxenholme to Windermere, and electrification from Micklesfield to Selby. Electrification north of Kettering was largely deferred or cancelled, but plans to electrify the route to Sheffield were later revived, and were seen as a way to in part make up for the cancellation of HS2 Phase 2 to the east. These sections to Corby and Wigston Junction have since been electrified, but for the time being that seems to be as far north as Midland Mainline electrification will reach. Pennine electrification was also deferred, and has since been repackaged to form part of the TRU, or Trans Pennine route upgrade, with a delivery window spanning CP6, 7 and 8. Beyond the electrification woes, Heathrow Western Access has also now seemingly been cancelled, after being kicked into the long grass for the last 10 years. And the link from Aylesbury to East West Rail also seems to have been forgotten about. So, what went wrong? Ultimately the H loss was overly ambitious, and the government was too optimistic about what network rail and the wider rail industry could deliver. Even though it was not expected that all projects would have been completed within CP5, the struggles Network Rail had just delivering the Great Western Electrification Program meant that other elements of the H-Loss became undeliverable. The industry simply did not have the workforce, nor the equipment available to deliver the upgrade program. And when key pieces of equipment such as the high output electrification train were delivered, they did not perform as expected. The government also had no firm plans for how the program would be delivered, and key parts of the Great Western Mainline Electrification Program had not been fully designed come 2024, so work was taking place as design work and planning permissions were being sought. This was a particular issue on the Great Western Main Line, which had many listed structures and local authorities didn't want to spoil the character of the architecture with overhead line equipment. So the electrification program fell behind, and even though electrification of several routes was cancelled to save money and to try and bring the program back on track, it still took until 2020 just to electrify the route to Cardiff. Within the electrification debate, you will often see or hear people within the industry talking about a rolling program of electrification. But what does that actually mean? Well, it may seem obvious, but it means providing a steady pipeline of work, as it provides confidence within the industry. But crucially, it provides a continued pipeline of work for the skilled and specialised workforce needed. A workforce that the industry has spent the last 10 years recruiting and training and has been able to do this because of the projects such as the Midland Mainline, TRU and electrification in Scotland. But now there are reports, with electrification schemes now falling off again, that the industry has already lost over half of the workforce since 2018. And this is a huge loss. But why is this important? Because if a future government finally realises that electrifying the UK rail network is actually quite important, we could end up with a CP5 type situation all over again, with a huge skills gap that takes years to fill. We do probably have more electrification kit now than we did 10 years ago, but it's no good if there are no skilled operators left within the rail industry to use it. That is why you will read and hear people within the industry continually talking about a rolling program. It really is the best way to reduce the cost of electrification and speed up its delivery. But with no pipeline of work, the workforce is being lost to road schemes, or have left the construction and engineering industry altogether. It may perhaps seem trivial, but trying to find skilled workers who are willing to work away from home for days or even weeks, and work nights and weekends is no easy task. So, retaining workers is absolutely vital. Whilst it's true to say that CP5 did deliver some successes, it should have been seen as a warning. But, unfortunately, the Treasury's current obsession with yearly spend means it's likely that we will end up repeating the mistakes of 10 years ago. 